Middle school teachers of Reddit, what is the most awkward cringy thing you've seen a student do? I used to teach middle school before graduating to teach high school. While I was in middle school I had one awkward student in my last period that took a liking to me. He would stay after school every day just to hang out with me. He was always asking how he could help out after class, like cleaning the whiteboard, putting chairs up, that sort of thing. We would usually talk while he did this. One day he surprised me by saying I bet you'd be a really good dad. I think it would be awesome if you were my dad. Think of all the things we could do, I kind of laughed a foff, because middle schoolers say a lot of weird thing. A couple of weeks go by. Same thing. He's staying after school to hang out with me when he says you know you have a conference with my mom tomorrow yeah, of course. She's really cute. You'll like her. Uh, what? Maybe you guys can go out on a date needless to say, that was an awkward conference. I actually feel quite sorry for the kid. I had a kid once ask if I could be her mother. She was only 7 so I suppose it's less of an awkward situation than a middle schooler, but she broke my heart, as I knew that her parents always got home late and she'd go home to an empty house at such a young age. I did feel for the kid. His dad had left them when he was a baby and had no male role models. I was flattered to be the male role model he wanted. He was very socially awkward. Yeah, I imagine it would be some sort of situation like that. Oh my god how sad. You did the right thing but damn I really feel bad for that kid. I had a 7th grade girl raise her hand and ask me to come to her desk. When I leaned over she asked quietly if she could go to the bathroom and gestured at her lap and muttered something I didn't hear. Assuming that she started her period, fortunately in dark black pants, I let her leave of course. When she comes back, she stands next to her chair for the rest of the lecture and leaves quietly at the bell. Next class comes in. And, while I'm straightening up and standing in the hallway, the student who was assigned the same seat as that girl grabs some paper towels and starts cleaning up. There is a huge puddle in the chair and on the floor. It suddenly occurs to me, the dense teacher, that this poor girl had peed her pants, in 7th grade. I told the boy that someone spilled dirty water and tried to get him to stop cleaning it up, but he was like, nope. Already done. He had just mopped up some girl's pee. I told him to wash his hands in case the tea was sticky and let it go. I asked the girl the next day if everything was okay. She was so amazed that nobody even noticed. Thank goodness for unobservant teachers and students that day. But watching that boy clean up he has haunted me. He was almost done when I realized what was going on, but still. Great reaction as a teacher though. You handled that very well. Honestly the kid sounds like a nice young man. Don't let it haunt you. Pee is just pee. I've had to clean it up as a librarian, along with blood and vomit. It happens. Is cleaning up blood and vomit a common thing for librarians? I never realized libraries were so hardcore. I don't know about everywhere, but I've seen a lot of homeless people hang out in public libraries. This school year one of my students bet another student something like $20 to lick his ballsack. The boy agreed, and decided that after a sweaty day in gym class in the locker room would be the best time to do it, which he did. They also had a third boy there to film it on their phone, of course, so now they are all suspended pending potential charges for making and distributing child pornography. As a result our district attorney came and gave an assembly presentation of laws pertaining to sting and underage sex to all of our kids. I think half of them started bricks when they were told that the DA could potentially gain access to their past snapchats. That's a good bluff. I agree. I am pretty sure he was trying to say that if any one screen captures it, then it is saved somewhere and they can use metadata to find it and subpoena it, but it sounded more like all their photos and videos are being secretly stored somewhere. Uh, if you don't think snapchat doesn't save everything somewhere I have some news for you. That is a metric ton of data to store. You vastly underestimate the technology and sheer storage capacity available to even reasonably well-off organizations. The most common cringe-inducing activity is the Naruto run. Every year there are still 4-5 boys that exclusively travel through the halls with their arms raised behind them. Second place is when kids say a joke and no one hears them or they don't pick up the social cue that no one thought it was funny so they say it like 10 more times. Hey, that's a spicy meatball. 
No response. Hey, that's a spicy meatball. 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 Meanwhile I'm going insane at my desk with my teacher ears that hear everything. Someone for the love of god please answer him. I've made it part of my job as 5th grade teacher to inform my kids on how to make a joke. Part of it is that you can't repeat it, because jokes have to be a surprise. So now they police each other on it to the point that other teachers have told me my kids shut down the let's say the same f over and over cycle in other rooms. Hero. I wanna be Seiko. Oro Tataru Ko Yap. Kase Nant. Hoshiku Wa Nasar. This isn't one instance it's just daily. My students draw d**ks on everything. It's almost like in the movie Super Bad. I legit have a collection of drawings ranging from stick figures to scientific journal quality. I was out for personal reasons for 3 days. When I came back the kids had drawn d**ks on the back of all our computers with sharpies. It's like they are obsessed. And before you ask I save the pictures for evidence in case I need to use them in a parent teacher meeting. That and they make me laugh really hard. I used to teach high school art. Penis is drawn everywhere. Penis is sculpted out of clay or even the little charcoal erasers that are very malleable. My co-worker told me that he squashed the problem by holding a drawing of one up to the class and saying, Is this a self-portrait? Because if so, there may be some health issues, or something of that nature. My last first semester to teach art, I had a wild class with many freshman boys who drew penises on everything, and I did what my co-worker said. I held up the paper and said, Hey, look, I've seen that you guys draw a lot of these. I think maybe you might have a fascination of some sort. Or are you practicing self-portraiture? If so, then I paused for dramatic effect. I think you might need to see a doctor. The other kids in class took it from there on my behalf and roasted the penis drawers. I didn't see any more that year. The next year, I went on to teach English at a nice, fancy charter school and I had seniors. I had to leave class for an art meeting and there had been a sub in my room for that time. I came back to a very creative penis drawn on paper and pinned to my word wall. It was an elephant whose head was a penis and scrotum. In that same class, someone also once left a condom in a chair, out of the wrapper. Oh my god, I can't stop laughing. If my teacher told our class that as a kid, I guarantee you we would have doubled down and started drawing the most disgusting possible penises with weird bumps, protrusions and on the d**ks. We were some old kids, but it was hilarious. My wife works as a 7th grade Ella teacher. There is a kid in her school that everyone is afraid of, including teachers. He has very morbid thoughts and has no issues sharing them with everyone. When classmates share how their weekend went he discusses how he loves killing people in his video games and how good he is at doing it, etc. A few weeks ago on a Monday, said student returns my wife alone a pen that was given out. Thank you she says, to which he replies no thank you. I slept with it under my pillow all weekend because it smells like you. He has since been assigned a new Ella teacher that is actually across the hall and since then he had to get his desk moved in that classroom because he would be caught staring into my wife's classroom for the entire class. They had parent teacher conferences and his single parent father is equally as sketched out by his own son. I had a kid as a student once that could be a little be scary. He was walking around once with a pencil threatening to stab other kids. He would get into rages where he seemed to just lose control. I tried to be understanding with him his family was in a stressful situation as far as I could tell because of his younger brother having a severe learning disability. Perhaps he was angry at a lack of attention. I made it a point to be nice and understanding with him to show him that he is a valuable person, even if he may not feel that way at home. I don't mean to be rude, but is there a new usage for learning disability I always understood it to refer to dyslexia and other issues that made it difficult to learn material. I've seen it used now to refer more to what seems like conduct issues or development disorders. I'm probably totally incorrect there, but could you give more info? When I say learning disability, I mean things like dyslexia too. I don't use it for conduct issues. I don't know if development disorders could fall under the bracket of learning disability. I think it's a bit of a grey area and there is a lot of overlap with all the different diagnoses and labels that exist. I used to teach 7th grade science in a school with fairly low level students, 
so reading skills weren't particularly sharp. As we're about to get into the differences between living and non-living things, it was time to cover some new terminology, so I had a student read a paragraph from the textbook aloud to the class. It went something like this, there are all kinds of orgasms in the world, big orgasms, small orgasms, even microscopic orgasms. Some orgasms have fur, some orgasms have scales, and even you are an orgasm. Not a single student knew any different, or at least didn't make a big deal out of it, but I was about to die with laughter. I went into the hallway to compose myself, then read the second paragraph myself, an organism is a living thing, which can be defined as, funny that none of the kids caught on a kid did something similar in my 7th grade class and we were all crying with laughter the poor kid never lived it down. A bunch of older kids asked my friend if he knew what an orgasm was, he started giving the definition of an organism, he didn't understand why everyone within earshot was dying of laughter. He was a pretty sheltered kid. A religion teacher once said she had a friend called Richard who was a pretty big guy, in a muscly sort of way, and her and her friends called him big She was oblivious to it.